are uh, UT Davos, so he will speak on the apparent singularities of uh, defined systems. Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, so today I will uh, explain, uh, explain my recent work with uh, Shao Shi Chen, Manuel Kaos, and Ziming Li about uh, apparent singularities of definite system. So uh, let's start from the univariate case. Uh, so here we uh, <coughs> use a notation partial to denote the usual differential uh, operator. And uh, uh, then we consider the corresponding uh, linear uh, differential operator with polynomial coefficients. Uh, it's uh, equivalent to uh, <coughs> talk about the linear differential equations. Uh, here, uh, the highest exponent for partial with non-zero coefficient is called the order of the uh, differential operator. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> so a, a point is called an ordinary point of a, a, a differential operator if, uh, if uh, it uh, does not uh, annihilate the leading coefficient of the differential operator. Otherwise, this point is called the singularity of the uh, differential operator. Uh, I also want to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, formal power series. Uh, in the univariate case. So a formal power series uh, uh, is a series in, in, in this form. Here, the lowest exponent with <coughs> non-zero coefficient is called the initial exponent of the formal power series. And uh, <coughs> uh, Foucault, uh, uh, he, propo uh, he proves uh, the following theorem in uh, 1866, uh, so given a non-zero differential operator, uh, <coughs> he gives a, character, a characterization for the ordinary point of the differential operator. So the origin is a ordinary point of uh, L, if and only if L has uh, uh, order, uh, <coughs> order L linearly independent uh, Formal power series solutions uh, with ex, uh, con consecutive initial exponent from zero to order l minus one. So here we on, uh, in this talk, I only talk about the <coughs> origin because for the other point, we can make a linear transform uh, transformation to uh, uh, to go to the uh, the origin case. <coughs> In this theorem, the first condition is easier to check, right? Uh, what? The first condition. Uh, what, what? The first condition is easy to check, and uh, so the, the reason you would want this theorem is because you want to check the uh, you want to check whether the second condition holds. Um, is my question clear? Uh -huh. Because uh, uh, checking uh, whether the origin is an ordinary point is immediate, right? So it's easy. Uh, you, you mean the equivalence of this? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the first condition and the equivalence. Uh, you say A the, is the first condition is very easy, easy. to check. But uh, you would want uh, to verify the second condition, right? That's that's why you, you have this equivalence. Uh, actually, yeah. the the purpose uh, uh, somehow I think uh, the original purpose is to calculate the solutions yeah. around the origin. Mm -hmm. It's not to uh, verify the second condition. Yeah. It, it's to Calculate the solutions uh, for mm -hmm. the solution and mm -hmm. at the origin, mm -hmm. and Foucault gives such a characterization. Okay, so yes, okay. and also the algorithm too. Yes, it is uh, constructive. Yeah. So our contribution is uh, a generalization of his result in the multivariate case. Yeah. Uh, next, I want to introduce. Uh, um, apparent singularity. Now let's assume that the origin is a singularity of a, the differential operator L. Uh, the origin is called apparent singularity if L has a 
uh, all the L C linearly independent solutions in the ring of a formal power series. Uh, uh, could you go back to the to the criterion? Yes. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is uh, is this. So if uh, the origin is an ordinal point, it uh, it also has order L linearly independent uh, formal power but series. No, 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 no. Uh, but 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 you you need to see, uh, uh, pay attention. Uh, okay, the okay. initial exponent the initial is a consecutive uh, integers from mm -hmm. zero to order l minus one. Uh -huh, okay, okay. But for apparent singularity, the initial exponent is not so regular. Not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I will show you mm -hmm. one example. Okay. So for this uh, uh, first order. Differential equation, uh, <coughs> we can easily check that the origin is a singularity, and uh, uh, the solution at the origin is this uh, monomial. So in this case, it's a uh, uh, apparent singularity, and the initial exponent it starts from five. It's not start from zero. <coughs> uh, the motivation for our study is like this. So we assume that uh, uh, the origin is an apparent singularity of uh, L. Then we want to find a second differential operator M, such that the solution space of uh, L is contained in that of uh, M. And secondary, uh, the origin becomes uh, an ordinary point of M. Uh, if if we can construct uh, such a differential operator M, uh, then uh, we know imme immediately the solution uh, <coughs> the, the solution space of L uh, at the origin. Sorry, I, I, I did not write. Uh, the solution uh, of L at the origin is spanned by formal power series without uh, solving the differential equation. What what is the do we know the order of M? Uh, yes, we can corresponding to the order yeah, of M. We, we can derive a upper bound of M. An upper bound. Yeah. It will be bigger than the order of L, I suppose. Uh, definitely. Right. Okay. So F, uh, okay. I, I will show you how to construct them. So uh, uh, if the solution spaces are included like that, mm -hmm. uh, what's the relation between M and L as differential operators? Uh, uh, actually, I will show you later that M is a, a left multiple of L. Mm -hmm. Left multiple. Uh, okay, so could you write down yeah. which letter? Uh, actually, could you, uh, maybe, could you uh, use the uh, word? Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the because of the yeah. video Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, P is also a differential <coughs> operator with uh, rational functions. Rational functions. Uh, coefficients. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so you love rational functions. Yeah. So you can clearly see from this uh, uh, formulation that if uh, uh, one function is a solution of L, then it's immediately yeah. a solution of M. Do you, yeah. you want to actually kill the um, the, the, uh, the zeros of the uh, yeah, that's correct. That's what I'm wondering. How you can do that? Uh, the magic is uh, uh, is that we choose a p that's with a rational coefficients. So it's where somehow cancel yeah. some factor of the leading coefficient. But, but if you cancel, but you uh, but you but you're not allowed to introduce uh, the uh, denominators in the rest, right? So the result has to be. Denominated yeah, you need to arrange the denominator properly so that. Uh, uh, the result is still yes, yes. polynomial. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you give a simple polynomial. example how this works? Uh, I, I will actually write right here in that example. What? Well, I mean, look, no, I mean, I, I'm just guessing, but, but if L's leading coefficient is 1 over X, let's say, yes. then you just multiply yeah, by no, X. X there's no is, uh, leading coefficient of L is polynomial. No, 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 no. The, co X, oh, X. the coefficient right. is polynomial. Right. Yes. But, ah, but it may have a zero, right? right. So yeah. this is X. 
But then if you divide, then you divide you the other conditions. Like x, uh, yes, you, you, as well, you, right? you need to choose the uh, denominator right. properly so that m also have a uh, polynomial coefficient. So, how, can you show in that example? Uh, 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 maybe, <laughs> okay, I, I, saying he has an, I will definitely show you some example. Okay. Please be patient. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much to ask. Probably. <laughs> yeah. By the way, when, when, when you write the order, I mean, the solution of L is a subset of the solution of M. You actually meant it's a subspace. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's a vector space. Vector subspace, not just subset. Yes. Uh, so uh, basically, we want to uh, construct a, a op differential operator M to remove the singularities uh, uh, of uh, uh, the apparent singularity of L. So let's look at uh, what, what's the shape uh, of the formal power series uh, solutions of L at uh, apparent singularity. So the, uh, formal uh, the linearly independent formal power series solutions will have uh, uh, those shape. Uh, the initial com uh, components, uh, if we list uh, them from uh, the minimal one to the larger one, uh, then it's still order L linearly independent solution, but it's not consecutive. Mm -hmm. uh, what about that we add those missing uh, initial, uh, initial exponent that we add those uh, uh, formal power series a solution whose uh, initial <coughs> component is in red color? Well, then we, it's kind of, you have to, it's, it's not that what if it's, you have to add them, right? Yeah, you have to have that. Yeah, yes, you have to force. Yes. By definition. Right. Uh, yes, and uh, this idea uh, to to add those missing uh, initial exponent will lead to uh, this concept. It's called uh, desingularization. So uh, assume that the origin is a parent singularity of L, and we uh, we want to construct an M. So that M uh, is like <coughs> is a left multiple of L, and afterwards, after we doing the uh, left multiple, the origin becomes a apparent singularity of M, and we call M a desingularized operator of L. Uh, now the question is: uh, Is how, M unique? Is uh, M unique? Uh, not unique. <laughs> So well, if, if, but if you require minimal order, is it unique? Uh, I think so. I think so. Minimal order and also local no yes. uh, GCD. Yeah, yeah. GCD okay, so no all, that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, normalized. Uh, the first way to construct such an M is also uh, proposed by Fuchs in his uh, uh, <coughs> article. So we assume that the missing exponent corresponding to the formal part, uh, formal power series uh, uh, solution of L is k1 to kl. And uh, uh, then we can uh, compute the least common left multiple of uh, uh, all those uh, uh, differential operators. Here, uh, each uh, first differential operator uh, contains a, a formal power series solution whose exponent are k1 to KL. Uh, by doing uh, this uh, least common left multiple, then the corresponding uh, differential operator will have a uh, uh, formal power series uh, solution with a consecutive uh, initial exponent. And could you show the previous slide? Yeah, so you wrote plus dot 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 uh, 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 for e, x, to e, x to the e1. Right, so yes, a, yes. Are you saying that uh, you will need that? Uh, so yes. Fuchs we, is saying that, uh, like, first idea of Fuchs is saying don't do dot dot dot. Because you want consecutive exponents. Yes, sir. No, 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 but uh, plus dot dot dot, he, he means it's like a series. Why don't you terminate? Why don't you just x to the e1? Why don't you, why do you do because plus you, dot because dot dot? Uh, so you, 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 uh, in, in general, uh, well, the, I mean, even on the example just now, you have a constant, you have a number there. So the dot 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 will be k1, k2, and so on. 
Uh, no, 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 no. Plus the result uh, so terms. Uh, Hello, the terms. Right. Yeah. So, so in in general, it's a formal power series. We we are not have a uh, uh, have a not uh, we are not uh, only have a, uh, we are not be a monomial. It right. might be have uh, some higher monomials, and uh, uh, you are right that uh, in Fuchs uh, construction, he just uh, choose a monomial. It, uh -huh. That's uh, already enough for our purpose. But yes. if you choose some higher term, it's still fine. Then the corresponding differential operator uh, is much more complicated. So you are right that Fuchs choose a, a monomial mm -hmm. missing uh, a missing formal power series of solutions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, but why did you put plus dot dot dot? Uh, I want to illustrate the general case. Maybe uh, maybe I should simp simplify it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is a. a um, there is a uh, different ways to construct uh, such an M. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the uniqueness cannot, of M cannot be guaranteed by by removing uh, common factors or any normalization because it depends on the choice of the yeah. power series. So I guess it's not unique. Huh? I guess it's not unique. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it not uh, not unique. Even but if you use an after normalization, I don't think it's unique. Right? What? So it, is M unique or not? Um, so if you ask, uh, uh, if you ask, the order is minimal, and the right. leading leading co uh, the degree of the leading coefficient is also minimal, right. then it's unique. So it, it would be independent of your choice of the power series solutions. Uh, yes, yes. For this constructor, it only removes the apparent singularity. Right. Actually, there is a more general construction to remove. All the possible removable uh, singularities. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, right. well, maybe this will clarify with an example. Mm -hmm. When you add x, or you add x plus one, or no, no, x plus x squared. Okay, so x plus x squared. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, for removing apparent singularity, you are right. We just need to, uh, the monomial mm -hmm. monomials. Uh, so as I mentioned before, okay. the construction for the desingularized operator is not unique. And here is an advanced method. Okay. So uh, Chen, Yaroshik, and uh, Kaos, and a single, uh, Michael single. Uh, oh, but wait, wait, to clarify, the first idea is not just an idea, it's, a, it's like a, it's a method. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, an algorithm. Um, yes, an algorithm. yes, yes. And uh, why is this idea bad? Why uh, would you need another method? Um, why would you want to have another method? Uh, the, uh, another method is that uh, uh, apparent singularity is just a one kind of uh, uh, removal singularities. And if you want to uh, remove other singularities, then you need a more advanced method like this one. And also, we are not uh, only concerning the differential case, but also the, the shift case, Q case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we need some uh, a new method. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, <coughs> they construct a, a desingularized operator with the following uh, three features. Uh, first of all, all the apparent singularities become the ordinary points of M. So previously, Fuchs method only removes uh, single, uh, apparent singularity at one point, but uh, they can remove all the possible uh, <coughs> apparent singularities. Uh, and, uh, so, so what happens with other points if you apply Fuchs's algorithm? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. So, Fuchs uh, uh, method is to remove the singularity at the origin. So if you have another uh, origin that, uh, <coughs> you see, you can also do the constructing to remove the apparent singularity at another point. Then, I think if you add, add those uh, two uh, m, let's say m1 and m2, mm -hmm. then the new one uh, has no apparent singularity at those two points. Can you uh, can you introduce uh, additional singularities this way? 
Uh, can you introduce unwanted singularities? Uh, yes, but uh, but we can remove it by using the Euclidean algorithm. There is a certain trick to uh, remove those uh, uh, addi uh, new introduced singularity. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, would you say that one can adjust Fuchs's idea to satisfy, I would say, the first two bullets? Uh, can you achieve the first two bullets with Fuchs's? Um, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. But the last one is hard. The last one is hard, okay. Yes. The last one is that uh, they can guarantee that the degree of the leading coefficient of m is minimal. And mm -hmm. also another of the, uh, their contribution is their method applies for uh, not only the differential case, but also the shift case and the q case. Uh, but for the shift and q case, what's, the, uh, what's wrong with Fuchs's method? Um, then uh, in that case, uh, uh, the, sing um, the definition for the apparent singularity is, uh, is different. So in that case, uh, uh, the formal power series is not a, uh, uh, the ring of formal power series is not closed under the shift operation. Mm -hmm. the, def uh, the definition is uh, uh, different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, um, when you say removing it, um, So, so you were at first you were just saying that zero is the um, single, uh, is the apparent singularity. Yeah. So you're saying that if there are other ones, then first of all you remove the zero, mm -hmm. and then you, there are other ones, then you translate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you remove that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But then, then you have to keep the first one uh, still not an apparent singularity. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can't just say, oh, I do this one, and then I do another one, and do another one, mm -hmm. unless you can keep those, <coughs> those ones remain the same. I mean, otherwise you're doing one, only one. I mean, I, I'm not sure how you can do, let's say, two. Um, so first, uh, because you said all apparent singular, not just not just a zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for their method, they, they are not doing something like we hand uh, each, uh, 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 handle each point uh, case by case. They, they remove all the singularity at one stroke. So they, they construct a, a P that they remove oh, all was. the singularities all at once. All at once. Okay. Okay. The, the idea is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I guess he's, you're talking about the Fuchs, how would you do it? With That's, the right. Fuchs, That's right. That's right. Yeah, but the Fuchs method, uh, like what I mentioned before, if you remove uh, apparent singularity at each point, then uh, um, but it might what? introduce some other... Right, so, so how, that's why I wonder how you remove all at the yeah, same time. That's a different, yeah, it's a different method. Yes, it's yes. Yeah, this, very this, different, right? this is a also, very different method, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So another question. Mm -hmm. um, so the, uh, there has been hundreds and fifty years mm -hmm. between. Yeah, yeah. What was going on? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, it's uh, this problem <laughs> is not uh, not uh, interesting for people for a long time, and uh, uh, when they, um, uh, this problem uh, uh, is first uh, uh, first done by Abramov and uh, Bakatu, they find some uh, applications in uh, uh, in combinatorics, and uh, later on uh, those authors they they continue their work. And when I become a PhD student, I, I continue their work. Okay. okay. Uh, so one, uh, so in two thousand and sixteen, I uh, I give a new algorithm to uh, calculate the desingularized operator, and. Uh, uh, so my, my algorithm will uh, actually not only uh, remove all the possible singularities, but also give the generator of this uh, intersection idea. This is uh, called the contraction uh, idea related to the differential operator L. Yeah. Uh, 
So my algorithm not only uh, works for the differential case, but uh, also uh, we, we can determine the contraction idea for the shift operator, which have some uh, interesting applications in combinatorics. And uh, another feature of my algorithm is that the, uh, the ring of a constant is uh, not necessarily a field, but uh, could be uh, replaced by a uh, principal idea domain. Uh, now let's go to the uh, multivariate case. So in the multivariate case, we are working in two uh, rings. The first ring is a ring of differential operator uh, with uh, polynomial coefficients. And uh, extended ring is a ring of differential operator uh, with a rational uh, function coefficients. We call, uh, we call the first ring the uh, well algebra. And the second ring the rational algebra. Here the partial is the usual uh, partial derivation. And the left idea uh, in the rational ad, uh, algebra is called definite. If the corresponding uh, quotient space is a finite dimensional vector space <coughs> over the field of uh, uh, rational functions. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I also want to mention the rational algebra is a uh, uh, nozzle. So every left idea is finitely generated. So let's assume G1 to Gm are generators of uh, uh, I. Then the corresponding system of uh, linear partial differential equations uh, is called a definite system. So uh, in <coughs> For the uh, for some expert in D module theory, they call it the holonomic system. It, it's equivalent. Uh, okay, uh, so let's uh, let's take a graded term order on the monomials of uh, uh, <coughs> the differential operator, and uh, we take uh, G uh, to be a Grobner basis. Uh, with, uh, with respect to that uh, graded term order. We see that uh, G is uh, definite if the left idea generated by G uh, is definite. And uh, uh, the following set, the, the set is constructed in this way. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, <coughs> it's uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, exponent of uh, Different, uh, differential mon monomial such that uh, it's, it's not uh, reducible by the leading terms of uh, G. Uh, this is called uh, the set of uh, parametric exponent of G. And uh, the cardinality of uh, uh, this parametric exponent is called uh, the rank of G, which is the dimension of the solution space of uh, the corresponding definite system. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, uh, is the Y algebra commuted in, in terms of the deltas or the partials? Uh, what? Is it commutative in terms of the partials? Uh, for, for the differential operators, they are commutative. But uh, for the par partial and the XI, right, they're not, right? Uh, yes, they have the Leibniz rule. Right. So, yeah. um, does. So, uh, in what, the what in the in by, what do you mean by finite set is a Gromer basis with respect to that uh, oh, no. uh, definition? So how do you define that? Yeah. Um, do you, are you saying that any finite set is called a Gromer basis? Uh, no. So uh, a Gromer basis is somehow uh, f uh, first of all, uh, it's a um, it's a generator of certain idea yeah. and the leading. A leading term of those generator is minimal under this term order, so it's uh, analogous to the commutative case. Okay. Yeah. Right. But this is always uh, usually if you just have a um, an ideal. Yeah. Uh, left ideal, let's say. Yes. Uh, the Grobner basis need not be finite. Is that correct? Uh, in a, a non-commutative case. 
uh, in the general case, it's it's not. Right. And uh, we are interested the, to the northern ring, a ring uh, non commutative rings. So in this case, uh, the so you're uh, saying that for the Y algebra and the rational algebra, they are not they are they are finite. Yes. Yes. Okay. They are but in general, for any non commutative ring, it's not right. Yes. Okay. It's not. But in this case, the idea of Grosvenor basis <coughs> still have uh, many many interesting applications. Right. Mm -hmm. For instance, the ring of uh, uh, formal power series. In this case, we are not talking about the uh, leading uh, exponent. We are talking about the lowest exponent. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, it's not necessary finitely generated for the for the left idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> the parametric exponent corresponding to the standard uh, monomial in the a commutative case. Uh, let's look at uh, one example for the parametric exponent. So in this case, m is just uh, some uh, monomials, uh, uh, differential monomials, and uh, uh, so it's a, a Grobner basis. And uh, uh, the exponent for the leading uh, for for the leading terms of m, uh, I marked it as blue dots in this uh, picture. And they will form a stair. And the red dots under this stair is a parametric exponent of M. It's a differential analog of a standard monomial in the commutative case. Uh, OK. Uh, let's assume that G is a Grobner basis, and all its elements are primitive. Primitive means uh, 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 the, lead, the, uh, the coefficients for a differential op operator are relatively prime. So a point is uh, uh, called an ordinary point of, uh, of G. If, uh, G, uh, if uh, this point is not a zero of uh, all the leading coefficients of G, otherwise uh, it's a singularity. So uh, this definition is uh, compatible with uh, Univariate case. Is it compatible with leading operators? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in example one, the leading coefficient, uh, the product of leading coefficients of m is uh, just uh, equal to one. Uh, so all the points are ordinary points. Of M, and in the second example, uh, the product of leading coefficient are uh, a power of x two, so uh, the origin is a singularity of M. Uh, next, I want to introduce uh, a formal power series in the multivariate case. So previously, we fixed. Uh, uh, graded term order on the monomials of a differential operator. And this, uh, if we forget, uh, uh, so if we map a partial i to xi, it will give rise to an order for the monomials uh, of xi. And uh, a multivariate uh, formal power series uh, is uh, in this form. And the lowest exponent with respect to this uh, uh, <coughs> Order. Can I can I ask you a little thing, something? Yeah. Back to one page on the Grobner basis, uh, your definition of uh, singular points. Uh, this one? Uh, sorry. Uh, this one? Yeah. Right. Uh, G. The element of G. Oh, it's still linear. Okay. All right. It's still linear. Is that right? Yes. It's still linear. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Uh, so uh, the lowest exponent uh, with respect to this uh, term order uh, <coughs> uh, with non-zero coefficient is called the initial exponent of a formal power series. Um, induced meaning uh, like uh, you apply the same rule to the uh, vector of exponents. Uh, How do you induce? So we have a 
partial ordering for uh, for Oh, sorry. Oh, it's just one that doesn't Never mind, never mind. Oh, come on. Right, yeah, come on. So this is just two exponents. Yes. Okay, yes, okay, yes. Good. it's a very simple, okay. uh, simple operation. Uh, uh, now uh, we uh, we can state our main result. So let's assume that uh, G is a definite group on a basis, and uh, all its elements are primitive. Then we 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 give a characterization for the ordinary point of a definite system. So the origin is an ordinary point of G if and only if for each exponent in the parametric, uh, a parametric set of G, there exists a, a formal power series uh, solution with that uh, uh, exponent. So if we re uh, reduce this theorem to the univariate case, this is exactly the same as that. Uh, a focus uh, result. Mm -hmm. Is your theory? Yes, this is a main, uh, one of the main results of our paper. Great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one remark is that uh, uh, the proof of our theorem is uh, constructive. So actually, uh, uh, we can derive an algorithm for computing formal power series of solutions of definite system at those uh, ordinary points. And how complicated is the proof? Um, and how complicated was the proof? So the Fuchs, right? So before, for the uh, for the one uh, for like n equals. Um, I was think uh, was Fuchs. So how complicated was that proof? And, uh, Focus of proof is relatively elementary. Elementary. And, and this one. And for this one, I think uh, you need uh, to know some basic knowledge about the ring of differential operators. Not so complicated. Not so complicated. Uh, just just some uh, uh, commutative algebra and, and maybe a little bit differential algebra. Not so complicated. Mm -hmm. Is uh, it, I worry about G. Mm -hmm. um, why, why is the set of parametric exponents of G finite? Uh, because uh, uh, G is a defi uh, definite group on a basis. The definite uh, uh, is a differential analog of a zero dimensional idea. For the zero oh, dimension, because, because when you mod out, it's finite. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, right. so the the quotient okay. space is yeah. always a finite dimension. So okay. The definite is uh, uh, corresponding to zero. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So let's assume uh, that uh, uh, the origin is a uh, apparent uh, sing, uh, is a singularity of G. So it is apparent uh, if G has a rank rank G C linearly independent uh, formal power series solutions. Uh, for instance, in example two, uh, we can check that uh, the G has uh, those two uh, linearly uh, independent uh, uh, solutions. Uh, <coughs> uh, and by the definition, it is apparent. Uh, for apparent singularities, we can adapt uh, focus the idea to the multivariate case uh, so that we can check whether a given singularity is uh, apparent or not. If it is, we can remove it by computing uh, uh, its uh, left multiple. Uh, could you show your theorem again? I'd like to see your theorem. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, this theorem tells you how the uh, Solution looks like around the uh, ordinary point. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, could you back to, go back to the example? Next slide. Next slide. Next yeah. slide. And, uh, and based on solutions, could you explain why this is uh, a singularity? Uh, a singularity uh, like, is by... Like how the, uh, the second equivalence, the, theory, the second statement, second part of the equivalence doesn't hold. Uh, <clears throat> what was wrong here? The, uh, the, the problem is here. The initial exponent for the formal power theory solutions are not uh, uh, are not uh, equal to the parametric exponent of g. Ah, could you could you write the, write them down to compare? Uh, okay. So we see what's missing. Can we draw the stair for g? Yes. Yes, I will do that. So the leading coefficient of uh, uh, G1. So uh, this is a still, uh, this is a uh, initial exponent for the for the first uh, uh, first uh, differential operator, mm -hmm. and this uh, this uh, point is a initial uh, is a leading leading exponent of the second differential mm -hmm. operator, and in this case the pet. Um, mm -hmm. So in this case, in this example too, the parametric exponent are uh, the origin and uh, this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, form, uh, the formal power series solution for the uh, initial exponent is. Uh, So it is corresponding to this point and this point. Mm -hmm. So the uh, initial exponent for the formal power series is not the same as the parametric exponent of uh, G. This why it's become a singularity. Oh, so you are superimposing the picture for the deltas with the picture for the x. Is that correct? Uh, what? Are you yeah, so that's the induced ordering. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. you see that, that arrow. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no. So, so we are super, superimposing the, the two squares, I mean two stairs. One is for the delta using your g. Mm -hmm. The other one is using the x to your other solution. Mm -hmm. and, but you are superimposing them there. And you want, actually they have to have the same mm -hmm. uh, Yes. Same points. Yes. Same yes, points yes. under the stairs. Is that yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So that that's what the previous slide right. theorem is saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. You are right. Uh, so we can adapt uh, Foucault's uh, idea uh, for removing apparent singularities to, to the multivariate case. Uh, uh, so I will show you, uh, we, we have a general algorithm for uh, doing this for arbitrary definite system. system. I will illustrate our algorithm by example two. So in example two, uh, I've shown you in the previous slides that uh, the, ori uh, the origin is an apparent singularity. And uh, if we choose S to be uh, this uh, is a set of points, and then 
we take <coughs> M to be the Grobner basis of this uh, complicated uh, intersection idea. So basically, the each uh, uh, each uh, uh, diff uh, set of differential operator in this intersection idea corresponding to the miss uh, missing uh, formal power series corresponding to G. And if we take the intersection of all those differential operators, then we can uh, <coughs> Uh, we can remove this apparent. So what thing. guarantees that the intersection is not zero? Uh, or some, or even empty. Um, so if you uh, if you take the intersection of uh, two uh, left my idea in this case, uh, the geometry meaning is that you are adding uh, adding some more uh, new solutions to right. to G. So the solution uh, space become larger. Yes, you are right. Mm, uh, I, I, so for definite system, the uh, the dim uh, dimension uh, the. Uh, so, so solution space is a finite uh, dimension dimension space. Yes. That's why it's it, it's not there. If you take ah, the okay. intersection, right. so if, uh, if you take the intersection, it becomes zero. Then, it's, um, yeah. is it, what is oh, because S is finite. Uh, capital S is finite. So that's why the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You you, you can sh uh, we can show that. So if we, uh, we, uh, we are taking the, um, uh, taking the intersection of uh, several uh, definite system, uh, the corresponding uh, um, uh, solution space is to take the, I think it's to take, take, the, sum, the, take, the, sum the, take the sum of yeah. the uh, finite dimensional space. So it will not be there. Uh, anyway, uh, we are <coughs> we are doing actually the similar thing as a focus, but in the multivariate case, so that we we adding those missing formal power series solution, then the apparent singularity will be removed, and you can see clearly from uh, uh, M that uh, the origin becomes an ordinary point. Excuse me, I forgot what R two is. What? What is R2? Uh, R2 is uh, uh, second dimensional, uh, 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 second dimensional second dimensional ring of uh, differential operators. Oh, the rational, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rational, the rational algebra, the yeah. two variables. Yes. Okay. This is yeah, R2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just forgot about it. Yeah. Uh, another re uh, byproduct of our result is that uh, we can actually derive an algorithm to compute formal power series solutions at apparent singularity. Uh, <coughs> I uh, I will illustrate our algorithm by this example. So in this example, this is a, also a definite uh, Grobner uh, Grob basis of rank two. Uh, first, uh, first we can check that the origin is also a uh, apparent singularity by by computing the intersect uh, the, this intersection idea. Uh, we will see that uh, we can. Uh, check that the origin is an ordinary point of M, and uh, this M has a rank three. Uh, uh, next, uh, we compute uh, we compute the formal power series solutions of M at the origin of, uh, at the origin by using the characterization of ordinary points, and we find the following 
uh, three linearly independent uh, formal power theory solutions. Uh, <coughs> because uh, M So we, we construct the M by taking the interstellar, uh, sorry, H. The intersection uh, of H with some uh, other uh, left uh, uh, ideas. So the solution of H is uh, included uh, in that of M. So if we want to uh, compute the formal power series uh, solutions of H at the origin, it must be the linear, uh, linear uh, combination of Fi. The Fi is a uh, uh, formal power series we've constructed before. And we substitute uh, this ansatz into the uh, original definite uh, system H. Then we can show that the linear uh, a combination coefficients uh, must be a solution of the, uh, this linear equation <coughs> system. Here, uh, the matrix is, uh, uh, is like this. Uh, <coughs> and we can easily find it's the right kernel. And those, uh, uh, the base of uh, the right kernel will give rise to a basis of uh, solutions of H at the origin, which corresponding to those uh, two. Uh, formal power series solutions. So this is an idea for how to construct the formal power series solution as the apparent singularity. Okay, so uh, I want to make a summary of my work. So first, uh, we give a characterization of uh, ordinary points of a definite system, which is a generalization of a focus uh, result. And the next, we design uh, some algorithms for detect and remove apparent singularities of a, a definite system. Uh, an application of our algorithm is to give an algorithm for computing formal power series solutions of definite system at uh, apparent singularities. A final remark is that uh, well, you would probably ask, what about the formal power series solutions at the arbitrary uh, singularities? So I visited Professor Nobuki Takayama in uh, several years ago. Uh, he he told me that he gives an algorithm for uh, for uh, computing formal power series uh, at the ar arbitrary. Uh, singularities by using the D module theory. More specifically, he used uh, uh, B functions uh, in D module theory to construct uh, the formal power series. Uh, I understand how to construct those uh, formal power series, but uh, we also need to uh, verify the uh, series is indeed a solution of uh, uh, the system. And for this, uh, there is no elementary proof. They, they need to use algebraic geometry and then co homological uh, theory. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Can you go back to the slide where you write I sub 2m equal to the intersection of these? Uh, so this one? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, one earlier. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 How do you know that M is polynomial coefficients? Uh, <laughs> You're computing over the rational field, right? Yes. Of X. You can clear the denominator. So if you have some rational <laughs> coefficients, you clear the common <laughs> denominator. And, and uh, would uh, you introduce singularities then? Uh, uh, we can guarantee that uh, at the origin, you will not uh, introduce a new singularity. <laughs> at, up, at the other point, I cannot guarantee. That's why. Can you repeat what you just said? Uh, so, 
by using our approach, we can guarantee that uh, we will not introduce the new singularities at the, the origin. The right, but, but, the, so, but the origin is not the only, um, only non, not, I mean, not the only single point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for other points, I, can, I, t I cannot guarantee that. Uh, well, currently, then, but then how do you do it for all singularities? Uh, so our contribution is to uh, remove singularities at one point. At only one point? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So you're not generalizing singulars? Yes, yes. You're not generalizing the singular yes, result? Yes. Then that's one possible topic in the future. Right. Yeah. Right. So how do they actually remove all of them at the same time? Um, what kind of, I mean, what kind of theorems? So for the, case, yeah. uh, for the case, for the univariate case, they somehow uh, make an answer mm -hmm. for uh, the uh, target operator, <coughs> and okay. uh, somehow <coughs> try to minimize mm -hmm. every leading coefficient, uh, minimize the leading coefficient of the okay. corresponding differential operator. And for how to minimize this, uh, this is quite technical. Right? Okay. Okay. Yes. So you can call it that kind of thing? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, so here, you, you're not using that. You're just computing in the section, right? Mm -hmm. And you only do it for one point. Yes. yes. Uh, sorry, I, I forget to want to... Uh, uh, want, uh, uh, forget to uh, mention another thing. We not only have uh, one uh, algorithm for removing uh, apparent singularity. We we have another way. Let's use a, uh, it's a called a random desingularization. And for this, mm -hmm. we can uh, we can uh, remove all the uh, apparent singularities. Oh, I, I forget okay. it. <laughs> so oh, all right. Okay. We uh, we it's have a different a, one. It's a different method. Then. Yes. Yes. It's a, uh, we call it a random uh, desingularization. <coughs> it can be used to remove all the possible apparent singularities. So when you say use random, uh, are you using Monte Carlo or what kind? Uh, this means we pick, uh, uh, we, we also pick some uh, first order differential operators like this. But here, the S and the T are randomly, uh, randomly cho choose. But we can prove that. Uh, uh, so you don't want them to be the parametric good? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Point. It's not a, uh, not a necessary corresponding to the missing exponent right. in the parametric right. set. Uh -huh. It could be random uh, points. Wow. But uh, we can prove that uh, <coughs> uh, it is at property, uh, probability, pro one. Pro <laughs> it's probability 1 that uh, we can remove all the how apparent can, singularities. Yeah, then how many times do you have to try? Uh, uh, I mean to limit to. I mean, you say probably one is almost probably one, right? Yes. So there's some epsilon there. So how, what, how many times do you have to do to achieve, let's say, some given epsilon? Uh, uh, I, um, I mean, probability is one minus epsilon, right? Uh, uh, and, and you, mean, you, you mean how I mean, you, you can approach? I mean. So each time you can reduce the probability. Huh? You, you can be, yeah. You can increase the probability every time. Um, that's what probabilistic, probabilistic method does, right? Usually, and mm -hmm. when you keep enough of time, then it approaches one. So I, I'm just trying to ask you: Do you have any idea of how fast it approaches one? Um, I, I think in that case we are also doing the intersection, but. Uh, uh, this is not something like that, 1 minus epsilon. No. So that's if we do the intersection, either that we remove it, uh, or we just have to <coughs> remove it. It's not like <coughs> increase uh, uh, probability. Uh, the thing is that, well, but then, but then uh, if a uh, uh, random algorithm fails, uh -huh. then those points will, uh, will be some points in a variety. And the variety uh, uh -huh. is a measure one curve, uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, C, C to the N. Did you say measure one curve or, or so? Uh, what do you mean by that? 
so uh, yeah, board, board. <laughs> yes. uh, so a variety is uh, uh, living living code I mentioned. Uh, it's a uh, so in our case, it's a. Uh, 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 this actually is a variety, is a hyper hyperservice. Right. It's a zero, so, uh, okay. so it is sort of a ma major zero. Mm -hmm. okay. But you can uh, so William was asking, well, <coughs> mm -hmm. I guess actually estimating probability. Uh, you could do that if you have a bound on the degree of f. No, no, no. He, he doesn't re require that bound, I believe. See what he does is he chose a random s and t. Mm. And either it works or it doesn't. Yes, yes, yes. If it does, so the point that doesn't work, yeah, is defined by, the, 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 then by some variety. There. Yeah, so the point is in a hyper service, mm -hmm. and this is of a very low probability. Mm -hmm. but the, the point is that uh, whether uh, so, so you're not getting into the surface, you can estimate that if you know the degree of F. So actually, I think we can compute this F explicitly. Ah, oh, okay, so then you can actually, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can actually check when it, uh, it works or when it does not work, because we have this F. But you see, is, so, is it fast to compute the F? Uh, well, the variety... So I, I don't know to try it, but I think so. You're mm -hmm. writing it in terms of algebraic geometry, you're using C, which I suppose means complex variable. Right? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yes, yes. But the points that you're using are actually discrete points. Right. As compared mm -hmm. to they're, they're integers. Yes, they are integers. They're they're integers. integers. So it's very rare in some sense yes, for integers rare. to be a solution you know, yes, of a variety. Yes. That's, I mean, what I mean. right yeah, right. that's what I mean, probability one. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. I see in that sense, like because of the measure. Yeah. Okay, because of the measure. So this is a very fast, the random right. stuff is very fast. All right. Uh, then, well, well. So, how many points do you choose? I mean, you you choose random points, and there's comma t. Mm -hmm. But how big is capital S that you choose random? Um, I think uh, it's related to uh, the rank uh, rank of G. The rank. What's yes. the rank? What is the rank of G? Uh, the rank is uh, the uh, number of parametric. Yes, uh, the okay. number of uh, parametric exponent. It, it's like O O N, N N is the uh, rank of G. Okay, thank you. Thank you.